Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are solving quadratic equations today. We're, the ones we were looking at specifically have x squared as the first term, so there's no coefficient, no number in front of it, just plain x squared, and we're going to be solving that using factoring. So what to expect, we'll look at these three examples. I'll show you how to solve those ones, and then I will give you practice 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 that you can solve on your own. Let's take a look at our first example. The first example is x squared plus 7x plus 10 equals 0. The way that you solve these types of problems using factoring, you'll follow the same steps. Number one, you need to find two numbers that add up to give you 7 and multiply together to give you 10. We use 7 because it's the number in front of x, 10 because it's the number um, at the end, that constant. So we need two numbers that add up to give you 7 and multiply together to give you 10. The easiest way that I found to do this is to start with the numbers that will multiply together to give you 10. You want factor pairs that will multiply together to give you 10. I've gone ahead and listed some there. 1 times 10 negative 1 times negative 10, 2 times 5, and negative 2 times negative 5. It's important to consider the positives and negatives because, well, you'll see later on that we do sometimes end up using those ones. So I list the factor pairs of the final term, and then I ask myself, which of these ones add up to give me my middle term, 7? Well, I look at those numbers, 1 plus 10, that would give me 11. 2 plus 5, oh, there we go, 2 plus 5 is 7. So those are the two numbers I need. In essence, I'm saying the numbers that will add up to give me 7 and multiply together to give me 10 are 2 and 5. So I'm now going to erase everything in the middle section and just keep those two numbers, 2 and 5, the conclusion I came to by doing all of that work. Now, when you're factoring a quadratic, it gets set up like this. The x squared, um, the first term there, gets divided into the first location um, inside the parentheses here and here, as indicated. The 2 and the 5 go into those blank spots that you see there. All right, So it'll end up looking kind of like that. x plus 2 times x plus 5 you have now factored that quadratic equation. If you want to use FOIL or the distributive property or multiply these binomials to check, you'll, if you multiply them out, you'll get that exact answer. x squared or x plus 2 times x plus 5 will give you x squared plus 7x plus 10. In the final step, we're going to actually solve these, this quadratic. To solve it, there, just some quick understanding here. This term, this entire binomial, is multiplied times this entire binomial to give me the result of 0. So that means if I make this equal to 0, 0 times whatever that is gives me 0. If I make this equal to 0, 0 times whatever that would be would be equal to 0. So I set up two equations, x plus 2 equals 0, and x plus 5 equals 0. Again, I don't care what it does to this side. If I can make this equal 0, the full solution will, when you multiply it, equal 0. So I'm going to set that equal to 0. I'm going to do the same with this one. So x plus 2 equals 0. Well, negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. And x plus 5 equals 0 would give me the solution of x is equal to negative 5. So the solution to this is x equals negative 2 and x equals negative 5. There are two solutions to this quadratic equation. Now it's practice time. I have a quadratic equation for you. I'd like you to pause the recording, try it out. Try solving that quadratic equation and come back to the recording to see the full solution. Welcome back. I'm going to go through this in a little bit of a fast forward motion. I'm looking for two numbers that add up to 6 and multiply together to give me 9. I'm going to list the factors of 9. 1 times 9, negative 1 times negative 9. 3 times 3 and negative times negative 3. 
which one can add up to give me positive 6? 3 plus 3 is 6. So in essence, I am saying 3 and 3 are the numbers that will add up to give me 6 and multiply together to give me 9. Clear out all that middle section and plug in the numbers, um, the x's there and there, the 3 and 3 there and there, and then I'm going to solve. With this specific example, it's kind of nice because they're both the same. So I really only need to solve this one time. x plus 3 equals 0. I will subtract 3 from both sides of that equation to give me x is equal to negative 3. This is an equation that there is only one solution. x equals negative 3. Sample problem number 2. With this one, I'm adding in some um, a positives and negatives but it's going to be solved in the same manner as we did before. We need two numbers that add up to positive 2 and multiply together to give you negative 3. I'm going to list the factors of negative 3. So it would be negative 1 times 3 or 1 times negative 3. Having a prime number in the final position there is really quite nice. So now I ask myself which one of these pairs, these factor pairs, will add up to give me positive 2. Well, positive 3 and negative 1 will give me positive 2. So that means my numbers are 1 and, ne and uh, negative 1 and positive 3. So again, I clear out everything in the middle. I write out my two binomials. x squared gets put into the first place. Negative 1 gets put there. Positive 3 gets put there. That's my two binomials. Okay, so figuring out these numbers takes some practice, but you can get pretty quick at it. After we figured out those numbers, then we set up two equations, setting them equal to 0. x minus 1 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. Solve it. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, x equals 1. I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides to get me x equals negative 3. And that is how you would figure out the solution to this question. So sometimes you get positive and negatives. So here's your practice problem with some a positive um, middle term and a negative final term. Go ahead and solve that. Pause the recording. Start over and we'll look at your solution. So your solution. I'm going to go through all the steps. Two numbers that add up to positive 2 and multiply together to give you negative 8. I'm going to list the factors of negative 8 right here for you and figure out which ones will add up to give me positive 2. Hmm. Negative 2 and positive 4 will add up to give me positive 2. So the numbers are going to be negative 2 and positive 4. Those will multiply together to give me negative 8, add up to give me positive 2, clear out everything in the middle, and fill out my um, factored binomials. My x squared gets put into the first terms. Negative 2 gets put up there. Positive 4 into there. Now I'm going to set those two equal to 0. x minus 2 equals 0. x would be equal to 2. x plus 4 equals 0. And x would be equal to negative 4. So are those the solutions that you got when you did the practice problems? Here are all the steps for solving them, so you can check your work, of course, along the way. Sample problem number three is one that I decided to throw in all negatives um, to make it just a little bit different. Um, we're going to follow the same exact steps, though. We need to find two numbers that will add up to give me that and multiply together to give me that. When I do have a situation like this with negative x, that means negative 1x. So the numbers will add up to give me negative 1. I wanted to show that in an example. If you do not have a number in front of your variable, it's implied that it is a 1. All right. So I'm going to list the factor pairs for negative 12. Here they are. That's all the factor pairs of negative 12. And I have to think to myself, which of these will add together to give me negative 1. Well, negative 1 and 12 gives me 11. Negative 2 and 6 gives me 4. Negative 3 and 4 gives me 1. So I'm going to go over here. 
3 and negative 4, will, when I add them together, 3 plus negative 4, that would give me a positive or a negative 1, which is what I'm looking for. So the numbers I need are negative 4 and positive 3. Clear out the middle, write out my binomials. The x's go there. Negative 4 is going to go in my first one. Positive 3 is going to go there. And now I'm going to solve for both of those. I'm going to set them equal to 0. In other words, x minus 4 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. And I'm going to solve both of those. I'll add 4 to both sides of this. Subtract 3 from both sides of that. And that will be my solution. I don't know if you've noticed throughout the course of this that um, this last step is almost redundant if you just look at your answers here and switch the signs. Instead of if it's x minus 4, your answer will be 4. If it's x plus 3, your answer will be negative 3. Um, so you don't necessarily need to write in this step after you get pretty good at it and start practicing it a little bit more. Speaking of practice, here's your opportunity. There is an equation that has a, a negative and a positive. Your job is to go ahead and solve that. Pause the recording, try it out. Welcome back. Let's go through this pretty quick. You're looking for numbers that add up to give you negative 5, multiply together to give you positive 6. Um, to do that, I list the factors of positive 6 and ask myself which ones will add up to give me negative 5. The only one that will add up to give me negative 5 is right here, negative 2 and negative 3. Negative 2 plus negative 3 does give me negative 5. So those are the two numbers I want. Clear out the middle, set up my binomials with negative 2 and negative 3 going in there. Now we will solve that x minus 2, x equals positive 2, x minus 3 equals 0, so x will be equal to positive 3. So I hope you got that practice problem. You had three practice problems and three samples. I hope that that was helpful for you. Um, we did look at three different equations and look at um, when, what we did when we got positives, negatives, and a mix of them all. Hope that was helpful. Have a wonderful day.